Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before going to today's broadcast, let's by faith demand for our daily bread. Why do we do this every day? Oh, the Lord commanded us to do it. Praise God. And once the Lord has told you to do something, it doesn't matter how you feel doing it. You just obey the Lord because He is faithful to keep and bring to pass what He has said. Praise God. Now, and I've been getting testimonies of people saying, oh, do you know the truth? I just realized that, I mean, I don't lack things again like I used to lack before. There's a change. Why? Because you're doing something right. What do we mean doing something right? You're doing something that involves the word of the Lord. So if you are ready with me, boldly make this demand from the Lord. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive from you my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Receive yours in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we were talking, we were still talking about the judgment of God. How does God judge issues? How does God see things? I've told this story about um, Peter, we've talked about several people. And yesterday we talked with, I shared with you about Cain and why didn't God receive Cain's offering? Simply because he did not receive his person. Now, today I want to show you someone else. Let's talk about David. And turn your Bibles with me to 1 Kings chapter 15. Now, you know David. Everybody knows David. Praise God. The David in the Bible. The King David in the Bible. Now, many times you've heard people say things like, Oh, David lived by the grace of God. So when they want to talk about a man who lived by the mercies of God, Oh, David was a man that lived by the mercy of God. Why? And you hear people say, ah, Do you know this? David committed more havoc than Saul. But because of God's mercy, and David always ran to God. God always showed him mercy. But he's seeing, you know, sometimes it's important to pause and ask yourself, truly, what did David do wrong? Oh, look at Uriah and Bathsheba. Okay. What else? Um, see that now? Oh, he numbered the people and God dealt with him. What else? But you see, let me show you what God said concerning David. 1 Kings chapter 15 from verse 4. Now, this is God speaking. Nevertheless, for David's sake, 1 Kings chapter 15 from verse 4. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Israel to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Verse 5. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Raya the Hittite. Mm. Did you see that? God's testimony about David. God says he did everything he was commanded to do except for one thing, the matter of Uriah. Now, if you don't look at this closely, you will not understand. You want to look at David's life and say, huh? How come God says only one thing David did wrong? But I want you to take notice of something. And I want to read that verse 5 again. Let's look at it closely. You know, David told his son Solomon, which Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, let your eyes observe 
my sin. Now, that's the problem with a lot of people. Now, of course, I, I can tell you for the truth, it's not because we're so intelligent, it's because we have the Holy Spirit who is our teacher, see? So when I'm reading the Bible, I'm not reading it, you know, I, I love what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, some people read the Bible in Hebrew, others read it in Greek, but I read it in the Holy Ghost, praise God. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the only perfect way to read the Bible. Read it in the Holy Ghost. And reading it in the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you carry the Bible and say, Roko mo, Roko mo, bro. You can't be speaking in tongues and be reading and understanding. Praise God. Simply reading in the Holy Ghost means allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you. How do I allow the Holy Spirit to guide me? He says, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. So I know I pick up the Bible or whatever I need to do. He's right there with me. So what's he doing there with me? He's there to tell me what to do. Take note of that statement. The Holy Ghost is present in your life to tell you what to do in every situation. So I pick up my Bible and I begin to study and then, I find something I've never seen before. Even though I've read this many times. I, I look and I say, whoa. Now why? Because someone is pointing something to me. Hey, hey, take look, take note of that. Take note of that word. Now you you read it. Now that's why the Bible doesn't get old. <laughs> We've read now. Some of us have read this thing cover to cover times we cannot count again. Sometimes you just say, let me read this thing again from Genesis to Revelation. Let me see how fast I can cover it. And then you start reading. Every spare time you have, you're just reading and reading. And thank God today we have our phones. You don't have to carry a big Bible to be walking around with your phone. You're, you're somewhere not doing anything at the moment. You just scroll your phone and continue from where you stop. And you just keep reading and reading. And, and sometimes you, you, you see something. Now It will not happen for every verse every day. You get what I'm saying? It depends on what portion the Lord has allotted to you for that day. So your prayer is that you don't miss his portions for you. See that? Now that's why we ask him for our daily bread every day. Now daily bread is not just food to eat, physical food to eat. Daily bread also means, most importantly, his word to you. See that? Now, watch this. Because, verse 5, because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, God gave him an inheritance. What is that inheritance? One of his seed will always sit on the throne. That's David's inheritance for that kingship. Now, he says, God did this because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything meaning everything god commanded david he did it turn not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life so every instruction david received from the lord he carried it out that's how perfect david was and that's how god counts perfection guess what he now said Save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now, what does that tell you? That, that should tell you that when David was carrying out that whole plot against Uriah, now he he's he's had sexual relationship with his wife and she's gotten pregnant and now he's wondering, oh dear Lord, what, what have we done? we ah, this will be a big scandal for my person. So what do we do? Um can we hide this thing? Okay, let's call this guy. Let him come home. In the midst of that, do you know God commanded David and told him what to do? He said, how did he know that? Oh, look at it. Look at it. And turn not aside from anything that he commanded him to do all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So David did not turn away from everything God commanded him to do. The only thing he turned away from from what God commanded him to do was the matter of Uriah. Meaning 
God had given David command on what to do about that issue. And I'm sure David looked at it and said, nah, ah, I can't do this. Ah, nah, 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 I can't do this. Oh, no way. You know, you know, sometimes people do wrong. And they go before the Lord and say, Lord, I have done wrong. How do I come out of this? And the Lord says, go and confess to so and so person. Huh? They will now know, ah, no, 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 Lord, please, uh, I think we should leave it like this. Now, the moment God has given you a command and you don't do it, it counts against you. Now, from the place of understanding concerning David now, we can look at it and say, hey, There is a walking instruction David had with the Lord. And that is that he should never use his hand to avenge himself for anything. Yeah. Now, because of time, let me not search the scriptures. But, but I'll tell you this. You go look for the story and you find it. You remember Saul when Saul was to kill David. And when Saul was looking for David's life, and then Saul twice was brought into the cave where David and, David and his men were hiding. And he came in there and Saul and his men slept off. And in fact, one of David's men said to him, David, remember the word of the Lord to you, that he will put your enemies into your hands. Here is it. All David needed to do was to take the spear. Now, all of, he didn't need to fight anybody. He'll just take that spear. Remember, all his men were sleeping. And David had men that could surround that place. So he, he would have just taken the spear and trust to through Saul. And Saul would have been a dead man. And David's, the word of the Lord concerning David about the kingship would have been fulfilled in their thinking. But David said, nah, God forbid that I was sin against God. What did he mean by that? How are we killing your enemy that is looking for your life? Now, while David was there contemplating all those thoughts, you know, if Saul had woken up, David himself would have been a dead man. But he said, God forbid, I wouldn't do this sin against God and his anointed. Now, you remember also, Nabal, the, the, the husband to Abigail, when David heard that he was about to share some of his stuff, and David sent his, his men, go tell this guy, we protected his, his, his sheep, we protected his things in the forest, we made sure nothing happened to them. So go tell this man that we've been good to him, please let him be good to us also. And David sent his messenger and they got there, and the man drove them away. I mean, he told them, go and tell that stupid boy. I think I don't know how he left his master. Very bad boy. Oh, when they brought the news to David, David was angry. He was like, look at this man. Me, I, I, I sacrificed my men to protect his flock. And look at what he will say about me. Ah, David said, guys, let's go. We'll finish that man. He's a stupid man. Because... I mean, he could not simply appreciate what we did for him. Now, they were on their way when Abigail heard the story and quickly gathered everything and went to meet David. Now, one of the things Abigail said to David when she met him was, Look, let my king not do this thing and sin against the Lord. Are you see? And David said, Wow. Now, that's one of the reasons David had so much respect for Abigail. He said, wow, you have just saved me from sinning against the Lord. Now, the sinning against the Lord wouldn't have been to kill, uh, what's his name now? Not name. Uh, that's Abigail's husband. Sinning against God wouldn't have been to kill him. No. Sinning against God would have been 
the act of avenging himself because he got angry with this man. And he thought, oh, I'm power, more powerful than you. Let me destroy you. That would have been the sin. And David acknowledged that to Abigail. and said, thank you very much because you have, by this your action, you have restrained me from sinning against the Lord by avenging myself. Now, you look at that story and look at you will understand that, oh, David had a walking command from the Lord never to avenge himself. Now, you find out that in the matter of Uriah, he did not listen nor heed to that command. He went, I, now, it's amazing. The Bible didn't say he did everything right in the sight of the Lord except the matter of Bathsheba. He says the matter of Uriah. He was referring to how Uriah was murdered because David went ahead in order to cover his sin. He went ahead to kill Uriah. You know the story. So in doing that, he went against the command of the Lord and God held it against him. That's what God held against him. Now, listen, like I told you this, I told you this yesterday. The attitude that we display in every situation is most, mostly what God judges. It's not even the action itself. You see, because before the action is taken, you remember Cain. God said to him, before he went ahead to kill Abel, why is your face down? Why are you angry? And why is your countenance down? Oh, because you accept that. God said you should have done what is right. And God even gave him the opportunity. Change! He should have just went, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. Please have mercy on me. I'm willing to change. And he would have changed. But no, he felt, no, ah, this guy, this guy has shamed me many times. Let me deal with him once. And because he yielded, you see, that thought, that attitude gave him over to the devil because he allowed strife into his heart. And the moment strife came into his heart, the Bible said, where there is envy and strife, there is confusion and what? Every evil work. And time is up. Praise God. I'll continue from here tomorrow. Listen, I pray for you against the spirit of strife. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, it shall not overtake you. I, I declare you're coming to your senses and you are doing what is right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.